She's a lifelong American. When I was growing up, we mowed the lawn, we shoveled the driveway when it was snowing. Born and raised in Islip, Long Island. I was very involved in sports. But Rehan Siam is a jihadist, just not the sort you're thinking of. The word jihad means struggle. I treat me wearing hijab in the United States as a struggle. Jihad itself, struggle. That's my jihad. I mean, holy war, really? Who made that up? Th that's a, really a very bad translation. It's a self-struggle. Living in a secular society where you have to work to maintain your Islamic values, that's jihad. Rihan Siam's parents came here from Egypt. They were devout. But like so many immigrant children, she was a typically Americanized teenager. So when I'd be called to pray by my parents, I would just run between commercial breaks and wash up and pray and run back and hopefully I didn't miss my TV show. But as she grew up and went to college in what was now a post 9-11 world, she began to get closer to Islam. And one morning, she made a decision that would change her life, to wear the hijab, the traditional Muslim headscarf. It was very dramatic for me. And I remember how, like even now thinking about it, it really does make my heart beat a little bit faster because I was making a decision I knew was permanent. You put on hijab, you don't take it off. So I said, that's it. Rehan's jihad isn't violent, not even close. But it is public. It is a deliberate display of faith. Not just covering her head, but swearing off alcohol, praying five times a day, which isn't easy in a typically busy American life. Sometimes it's uncomfortable if you're in the mall. What do you do? Where are you going to go? Pray in your car? Rihan is part of a new generation among America's approximately two million Muslims. Young Muslims here are becoming much more religious than their parents. And this is being expressed by more women wearing headscarves, the increase in mosque attendance, more mosques being built, more Muslims wanting to attend Islamic schools rather than the public school system. Geneve Abdo is the author of Mecca and Main Street. She says that since 9-11, the majority of American Muslims feel they're singled out for suspicion and surveillance by the government and by ordinary people they will look at me as if I'm threatening. And I don't feel like I'm very threatening looking. I don't feel like I should instill fear in anybody's hearts. But I do feel like I get dirty looks. It's because they see me as a Muslim. A recent Pew Forum poll offered the first look at attitudes of Muslims living in America. The majority it found are highly assimilated, moderate, and see no conflict between being a devout Muslim and living in the United States. But there was a distinct difference between young Muslims and their parents. Young Muslims were almost twice as likely to attend mosque as their parents, and considerably more likely than their parents to say they are Muslims first, Americans second. And while most American Muslims reject extremism, younger Muslims, 26% of them, say suicide bombings can sometimes be justified. Author Geneve Abdo found young Muslims often feel a disconnect with the American lifestyle. They're rejecting a lot of things about American culture. They don't want to date. They don't want to drink alcohol. They don't want to engage in premarital sex. They consider many aspects of American society immoral. For Rihan and her husband Rami, good. Thanks. And most practicing Muslims, Islam is their identity. It shapes every aspect of who they are. Islam is a way of life. Ask anyone who practices. They will tell you it's not just your religion. A lot of people go to the church on Sunday and that's their religion for their week. Mine is every single day, every minute of my day. Islam even shaped their courtship. Rami asked Rihan's parents for permission before he asked her out. 
I like that. I, I was like, he's like, he's religious. Like, I could tell he wasn't going to try to meet me without any sort of, like, parental notification. Um, if you read about Islam, many of the things that we do are actually to protect the woman. You know, going to her parents and doing, and doing things in a proper way, you know, you're not hiding anything. Rihan insists that covering up is not a sign of a woman's inferiority, as many Westerners believe, but a sign that Muslim women refuse to be degraded, as she feels they can be in American culture. I don't want any guy to look, looking at me except for my husband, provocatively. Why would I want that? Why do I want to be a piece of meat? A feeling echoed by religious historian Karen Armstrong, who herself used to wear a habit as a former Roman Catholic nun. In some ways, it was very liberating. For seven whole years, I never had once to think about my hairstyle, my makeup, my clothes. I never had to wear man-pleasing garments. I never had to fill my head with the junk that society tells women to trivialize their lives about. I think Western belief is that the more you have, the more prestigious you are, and you compete with other people as to what you have. Who has a better car? Who has a bigger house? Who has the nicer purse? In Islam, it's actually the total opposite. You're supposed to be humble. So Rihan Sayam is committed to her struggle to live a religious life in a material world. It's her jihad. I want to be praying to God. I'm lucky that I wake up every morning I could think of God. I don't think that everybody has that, and I think that, that I'm lucky for it.